In this video we are back in the Flyby A32 Annex, this time taking a look at the built-in EFB otherwise known as the flight pad, that's coming up next. Hello some pilots and welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Simulator video. We are back in the A32 Annex by Flyby Simulations and as I said today we are going to be going through the EFB and all of its features. If you haven't installed this fantastic add-on yet, then take a look at my previous video where we install it and add some liveries. Let's jump into the cockpit and get started. Alright, so as you can see here on the left hand side, this is your EFB, also known as the flight pad. You, to switch it on and off, you can select the hardware button on the top right hand corner here. Or you can touch anywhere on the screen and it will switch itself on. To switch it off, you can press the power button in the corner here and it switches itself off again. Once you have switched it on, you're presented with the dashboard, which is the default page where it starts up on. On the left hand side here is your flight plan information. If you have a flight plan loaded through SimBrief, I'll show you later how to connect your SimBrief account. What you do is you select from SimBrief a button over here and it'll bring up your flight plan. Once your flight plan is displayed, it'll show you the meta for your departure and arrival airports. Down here in the corner, you can see you have the map and the weather and your aircraft on the map. We're currently parked at London's Heathrow International Airport. To zoom in and out of the map you can use the plus and minus buttons on the corner here. This is distance measuring equipment but it's currently in op at the moment. I do have a flight plan loaded in SimBrief so, so if I select from SimBrief I'll give it a few seconds and it will bring up my flight plan. Call sign, aircraft type, departure, arrival, departure time, arrival time, alternate, company route, winds, cost index and cruise level. Over here on the left hand side you can see the current Q&H, the wind, temperature, two points. Same thing here for the arrival, Q&H, wind, temperature, two points. If I click on the dispatch button it gives us an overview of our aircraft with all its information. It has no further functionality at this time. The next tab is our operational flight plan from SimBrief and this will show you all the information from your operational flight plan. You can zoom in and zoom out using the plus and minus keys. The third tab is our fuel. You can use this to refuel and defuel the aircraft as needed. So if you have a look at your operational flight plan and you see how much fuel you need for your flight, you can see block fuel 5090. So you come over here, you can type it in there, 5090, or you can move the slider left and right to change the fuel amount, but it's much more easier to just type it in. At the bottom, you can see the refueling time, you can select instant, fast, or real, and when you press the play icon, it will start refueling or defueling depending on the amount of fuel that was in your aircraft and it tells you the time estimated six minutes the next tab is the ground service page this page allows managing ground operations similar to the insim atc ground services but without having to use the insim atc it also has more and better features than the default sim ground services so the buttons are pretty self-explanatory passengers open doors baggage, external power, fuel truck, off door and catering. And in the corner here you have your pushback service. So you can call the tug, you can begin and end your pushback and the pushback direction. And then going to the next tab we have the performance calculator. This calculator helps the pilots calculate when to start descending aka the top of descent based on various variables so that the different scenarios can be calculated example descending with a three degree descent rate descending with a given vertical speed etc the several scenarios for you the top of descent calculation a fixed angle of descent descending from altitude x to altitude y with a fixed descent angle commonly three degrees fixed distance to navigation fix descending from altitude x to altitude y within a fixed distance example 90 nautical miles and a fixed rate of descent descending from altitude x to altitude y within a fixed vertical speed example 2000 feet per minute depending on the scenario ground speeds are included in the calculation to take into account that we usually 
slow down at some point during the descent. The fly plate top of descent calculator can be used for all of these scenarios. So if your if your cruising altitude is 39,000 feet and you need to descend to your target altitude of maybe 11,000 feet at a specific fix, you would start your descent about 88 nautical miles before your target fix. Ground speed has no impact on this calculation because it's a fixed angle. To calculate the top of descent with a fixed distance to a specific fix, we have to enter the starting altitude, the desired target altitude, and the distance to the target fix. For example, if your cruising altitude is 39,000 feet, your target altitude is 11,000 feet, the distance to the fix is 90 nautical miles, your ground speed is 450 knots, the desired vertical speed is 2,333 feet per minute, and your desired descent angle is 2.9 degrees. To calculate the top of descent with a fixed vertical speed, we have to enter the starting altitude, the desired target altitude, and the desired vertical speed. So again, using 39,000 feet, target altitude 11,000 feet, vertical speed 2,000 feet per minute, at a ground speed of 450 knots, you would start your descent at about 105 nautical miles before the target. To allow for different ground speeds during the descent, the calculator allows to enter several altitude levels with corresponding ground speed. This will be included in the calculations. Then over here there's another tab. This calculator helps the pilot to determine if a certain runway can be used for landing and which aircraft configuration is required to slightly clump to a stop on the available runway length. This calculates factors in wind, runway condition, aircraft weight and several others which might cause some runways to be viable in one situation but not viable in another situation. Example more weights etc. To use this calculator all you have to do is enter all the variables, so you put in your ICAO code, the wind direction, the runway slope, the wind magnitude, the landing distance available, temperature, approach speed. You fill in everything and it'll calculate the distances available. I'm not going to go through this whole calculator, it's pretty self-explanatory. Next tab is your navigation and charts tab. If you have a valid Navigraph subscription, you can connect it to your flight plate over here and you can pull up the charts on the f using the flight pad. As you can see over here, we can have the charts and then you can zoom in and out of the charts over here. I don't personally use this as I use the built-in Navigraph toolbar over here. I just find it better to be able to see a bigger chart outline, but it's there if you need it. Going on for that, you have the VATSIM controllers currently in range. You can change this to either VATSIM or IOVAO, and it will show you the controllers in range that are online if you use VATSIM. So as you can see, we have... Heathrow Tower online at the moment, Gatwick Atis and Gatwick Approach and Unicom. That's if you use VATSIM. After that we have a failures tab. This is currently not implemented at the moment, but as you can see it is on its way. So full simulation of the failures below isn't yet guaranteed, but I'm sure it'll be here in a certain point. Then if we go down to the bottom here we have our settings tabs and this is where you can adjust all the default settings and configurations for your aircraft. So the defaults, you have default thrust reduction height, acceleration height and engine out acceleration height. Aircraft configuration, you can change whether you're using kilograms or pounds. And pack signs, you can change whether it is no smoking or no portable devices. As in the aircraft these days, we don't really have a no smoking sign. Some options, you can change the align time. So it does align time, instant fast reel. DMC self-test time, instant fast reel, default barrow, you can put in auto, in inches of mercury and hect hectopascals, depending on where you're flying. If you select it to auto, it'll change depending on where you spawn your aircraft. MCU keyboard import, you can switch that on and off. And detents to calibrate your throttle, you use this one over here. At to AOC, this is where you select your source for where the aircraft is getting its ATIS information, so you can use VATSIM if you're flying online or via AVEO or Pilot's Edge. FAA if you're not flying online, same. You can use Meteor Blue, which is the default flight simulation weather, Pilot's Edge, AVEO, VATSIM, and the terminal area source. And the terminal area forecast source, you could use AVEO or NOAA. 
here is how you connect your sim brief account to the flower pad so you simply put in your sim brief username over here and make sure you don't put any spaces between the words and then you connect your sim brief through there the audio tab pretty self-explanatory volume sliders for the different volumes exterior volume engine volume wind interior volume and then lastly flower pad you can adjust the brightness of the flower pad or you can select auto, auto brightness i'll just leave it on auto and that's pretty much all there is to this efb at the moment i think in the next video it's time to fly so if you want to join me for that subscribe to my channel and i will see you then i hope this video has helped you and thanks for watching bye bye Thank you.